You mean I've been doing it wrong all along? <laughs> Welcome back to Concordia, my mostly scratch-built layout loosely set in 1940s New England. It's based on the model railroading classic book, H.O. Railroad That Grows, except I'm building it in N-Gage. So it turns out, all these buildings I've been building have been all wrong. They haven't been put together wrong. Their size is all wrong. Let me explain. And because I don't have a printer, when I've been printing out... Uh, these uh, different parts for the buildings. I've been using a third-party printer at uh, Staples called Print Me. You send them an email or the file that you want, then you go to Staples and you actually download it to one of their self-help printers and you can print out the document. It only accepts PDF files. So I've been creating the design in Inkscape, printing it out as a uh, PDF file, downloading it, and then using it to cut out the shapes. And it's worked really well. I've been really happy with it. A little bit of a pain in the neck having to run to Staples all the time, but it's been cheaper than actually buying a printer. Well, it turns out the PDF files are too small. <laughs> I never realized that until I just got my Cricut and went to import it into the Cricut and noticed the file was actually smaller than what it was supposed to be. Not much, just a little. And it turns out the PDF file has reduced the uh, size of the image by about 15%. But I've since discovered what the issue is. So in the last video, I had built the paper and cardboard mock-up of the train station that I'm building. And in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how I built the actual station out of cardstock using Inkscape and cutting it out on the Cricut. What I'm doing is designing... Uh, the walls in uh, Inkscape and I'm setting up guidelines right now as Michael Scott uh, from Chanwell had uh, shows and basically it's to get the correct sizes of the uh, different parts that are going to be put together using the measuring tools and uh, cutting it down to size. Then once you have the uh, correct sizes of the um, different uh, parts I'm attaching uh, textures to them that I got from textures.com or from uh, different uh, pictures I found on the internet and uh, imported them into Inkscape. And through uh, various uh, techniques in um, Inkscape, you can attach the texture to the item that you're uh, doing. And here, what I'm uh, doing is attaching this uh, siding uh, it's interior uh, clappered siding uh, to the uh, gabled ends of the ticket office of the uh, train station. And once you uh, uh, attach it, um, you highlight both of uh, the objects and then you uh, clip it and set it to the uh, um, design. And there you go. It's now, that's actually now a part of that uh, uh, end wall and you can move that end wall around and the texture uh, goes with you. So I do that uh, for all the other parts of the um, uh, train station, the waiting room and the coal room slash toilet. Once all the parts have been uh, assigned a, uh, a texture, uh, then preparing it to uh, do two different things. One is I'm printing out a PDF uh, copy of these uh, individual items because I'm going to attach them to cardboard and the cardboard then is going to be fed into the Cricut machine to be cut out all together all at once. That way I don't have to cut out the uh, paper and then apply it to the uh, pre-cut uh, cardboard. The Cricut machine does it all at once but I have to set up uh, the Cricut machine, or set up the uh, the cardboard first to accept both uh, the paper and the uh, uh, the design, so that it uh, cuts out properly. And right now, what I'm doing is uh, putting a one inch by one inch square on the uh, document, and that way I'll be able to size it inside the Cricut Design Center. Uh, when you imported uh, an image into Cricut. Unfortunately, it doesn't maintain 
the dimensions that you uh, created it at. Uh, so by putting in this one inch by one inch square, when I go into uh, the design center, I'll be able to resize it. And once I get that square, one inch by one inch in the Cricut uh, software, I'll know that the image itself is appropriately sized. So I'm just setting it up right now to be uh, most um, uh, advantageous uh, to the software to be able to uh, cut everything uh, appropriately. And so again, it's just being sized properly for the uh, machine. And this is where I would send it off to the print me service. I'll save the document as the PDF and it'll uh, I'll email staples at printme.com and they'll send me a code. So then I go to staples and go over to one of their self-serve printers and you have an option to uh, print via email and you enter in the code and it prints out the, the paper. So then I bring the paper home and I glue it to the card. So that's what I'm doing right now is getting everything set up for the uh, PDF uh, file to be uh, mailed out, uh, to be emailed and uh, printed out. In addition to doing setting up a PDF file, what I need to do is do a PNG file. And that's so uh, the Cricut software can readily uh, recognize the object and uh, create a pattern that will then be uh, printed out. So what I'm doing is uh, um, blacking out all these uh, items and that may, it's just an easier way for uh, the Cricut software to uh, read this particular document. You don't necessarily have to do that with anything you're doing with the Cricut, but with uh, this particular uh, uh, type of build, I, by making them all black, uh, it just makes it simpler for uh, Cricut to uh, read and uh, that will then be saved as a PNG. So now we'll open Cricut so you can see the steps to get there. So this comes up and we wanna click on the top right here where it says new project. And then we want to upload our image. And this is, as you can see, is the grid pattern on one inch squares. So we'll upload. And as you can see, I've been doing a few tests here. We'll upload the image. We'll browse our files. And there it is, interior Cricut Cut, PNG. And this is the image that comes in. Now this checkerboard pattern means it's a black, blank background and uh, it's a transparent background, I should say. And so we'll select the image type, which is just a simple image, and we'll click down here in the lower right, continue. So this is what the cut looks like it'll be. And if there was anything that you wanted to uh, cut off or erase, you have the option to do a, a manual uh, so if you had a white background here instead of a transparent background, you would then do select and you could just click on that background and it would automatically delete it. And then you have the erase option where you can go in and erase certain things. So we already have the transparent background, so that's fine. And now we'll do apply and continue. And now you have a choice between a cut image and a print then cut. And... We don't need the print then cut. We just want the cut image. So we'll select that and it says upload. So now this is our image right here and we'll select that and we'll do add to canvas. Okay, so here we are. It automatically sets up on the one half inch mark. But so if we move it over to the one inch size uh, the one inch by one inch, you can see it's actually larger than uh, one inch. So down here on the lower right, we can scale it. And just as we do an Inkscape, we hit the control button and we slowly scale it down to size. 
and that looks pretty good there, but we'll zoom in. Make sure that we've uh, Okay, that's good. So now we would click make it. And it'll cut out all these uh, objects. So we go continue. And now it's telling us to connect our cricket. So with the image loaded into the cricket machine, I come over to uh, the Cricut uh, design space, and it's connected to the, the machine. And so I'm going to use chipboard 30.7.62. That's saved as one of my favorites. And I'm gonna do just more pressure here, because I've known from other cuts that I've done that it uh, needs that little bit extra pressure. So I do have my fine point blade into the clamp. And now I just have to load uh, the mat into the machine. So I press this button here. And now it should uh, cut. So now the cricket is cutting out the uh, designs. And it's Looks like it's pretty well on the money. But as I've had happen before, while these images over here are perfectly aligned, these on this end are slightly off. Again, that's because of the resizing aspect of it. But I'm going to let this uh, do its thing, and then I'll be back. Uh, once I cut them all out, left with the kit of parts here. And what I really like about the Cricut is just how fine of a cut it can make. Like that window uh, divider right there. That's just a very fine cut that I'd be worried I would uh, be breaking with my, uh, if I was doing that manually, but the Cricut does it with ease. So what's left now is just for me to glue the, uh, the floors and the ceilings onto uh, the parts and I'll show you where we are. And so after gluing the pieces together, this is what we've got. I'll just got to put the ceiling pieces on these two buildings. So once all the parts have been glued on, the roofs and the floors, and you can see we got holes drilled in there. Those are for the nano LED lights that we have. They uh, really come along. So the next part will be to uh, put the walls along each side and uh, wrap it in the textures, add the windows and glazing. So a little bit more to go, but this is how you build the structure using Inkscape and uh, Cricut. And you've got a nice look inside at the ticket window there. Using the Cricut really cuts the amount of time necessary to uh, do all this, I find it a, a great tool. So come back for the next video in this series and you'll see the completed uh, train station. Okay, thanks for watching.